Hello and welcome to another episode of the Collab Talk podcast, where we discuss the convergence of technology, business productivity, and collaboration culture. My co-conspirators today again are Mr. Sean McDonough, a senior solution architect and consultant with Akumana in Cincinnati, Ohio, and a M365 Apps and Services MVP, and Mr. Hello. Jeff Roski, a senior architect for Insight, who are everywhere, uh, and the co-founder of the new Janky Workshop on YouTube. Welcome, gentlemen. Where? Yeah. Where's have the you, gem? Have, have you built any new wooden widgets lately, Jeff? Uh, no. Most recent project, I was working on a metalworking project. I was um, uh, working on expanding out my roof rack with some expandable uh, ends so I can actually carry full sheets of plywood on it. So Nice. Uh, I think that video is going to be coming out Sunday if I can get the editing done tonight. Hopefully no mishaps this time with cutting and... Being I still <laughs> have all of my fingers, surprisingly. Yeah. Much to I, everybody's surprise. I just remember the rotary saw and, you know, it caught on something and like threw the board back at you at one point or something like that. Oh, yep. The, yep. Got kicked back on the table saw. Yeah. I've had that happen a couple of times, but yeah, that's why I have this uh, extra padding here. So it's, it's, it's a protective layer. Ah. I saw that that new the new uh, uh, table saw designs that uh, I just because my my you know junior high woodshop teacher had a couple of his fingers that he could only do this way because he had cut <laughs> like somebody asked him he was like where, where do you want it cut right there oh you know uh, <laughs> but you've got the new the blades laser where if you anything that's a fleshy type thing you know so you, you do it with the fake fleshy like finger digit stick it in there it automatically just stops it yep i have and one of those i've i bought one of those i bought one of those a few years back i think actually right after covid i bought one um because my table saw that i had scared the hell out of me um and i was like it's worth it to you know maybe keep my little fleshy bits so it's not the table saw that scares me i have respect for the table saw it's the band saw that scares me ah uh, yes that doesn't stop that'll just keep on going <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I've shared with you the incident that I had that that I got traumatized standing behind the kid that lost these two. Oh, so oh. that was a great that's eighth grade, great yeah, experience. Hey. The wood shop <laughs> is no longer there. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so we're not beyond the wood shop talk. Uh, our focus today is on the latest Microsoft news specifically from Microsoft Build. I know it happened a little while back, and we've already been to couple other events since then uh, but there's updates around copilot of course uh modern workplace power platform and more Said so uh, yeah so we can <laughs> i guess we can get started let me uh let's get to move this across well oh you know what we've been sharing the whole time is that oh. what we have to do uh sean is that we have to drink every time he says copilot i gotta get i'll That's be right it. back yeah. i have to get a couple more seltzers here i'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to be gassy if, all afternoon. If you get thirsty, you just <laughs> <laughs> say co-pilot, take a sip. Uh, yeah. Co-pilot, co-pilot, co-pilot. Oh, Jesus. Co-pilot, co-pilot, <laughs> co-pilot. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so let's start. The book of news. A good book. You guys gravitate. Yeah, I've read it cover to cover twice. It's it's the character development that I really appreciate in this, so. <laughs> rather than the conclusion. Yeah, it for folks that don't know. So Microsoft, um, it's it, historically it's been with both Build and with Ignite. Um, I don't think they've ever done it with Inspire, the part, partner conference in mid year. Uh, maybe they have, but but specifically with the 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 developer uh, being Build and uh, um, Ignite being IT Pro. Um, have released the book of news and kind of all, uh, uh, all the major announcements. And of course there's stuff that striped out throughout the year, but there's a, there's a lot going on there, but I always recommend, um, uh, you know, it's, it's usually like, as the keynote gets underway, uh, my time, like, you know, whatever the, 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 the local time is for, 
the keynote at like 9 a.m. local, they'll push out the book of news officially. So you can go and scan through and see everything and they're going to be talking about. Occasionally, they won't release it until the second day when some of these the secondary announcements are made. But yeah, under embargo. Anyway. Yeah, I read it yeah. for the articles. That's right. The, of course. Yes. I like Not the, the gatefold uh, information architecture layout. <laughs> Woo! Look at those servers. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Who's yeah, they can do icons for SQL? <gasps> oh. <laughs> so it's great to come in, look around, see like what where Microsoft is focusing. You kind of see where the priorities are here. Um, you guys interested in anything that happened in the Azure space at all? Uh, I'm impacted by it, but I'm not that impacted by it. Yeah. Man. Well, I, I guess where I'd like to start is down in the <clears throat> co-pilots, the Microsoft 365, and specifically that, you know, a lot of news around creating co-pilots in SharePoint. So jumping down to that, I wish I could just click into the page and it would close the, uh, the, the table of contents, but it doesn't do that. Microsoft. Super easy, quick update to the way that you build out the book of news. I'm just saying. You can have Copilot build it out. Come on. That's right. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. So this is you know, going through, um, and I'm not going to read it verbatim, but you know, to talk about, there's a bunch of stuff around um, Copilot Studio expansion of that. There's a lot that's going on. Um, again, most of these are in preview, I think a couple of things we'll talk about here are will be in preview like later this year. I've always love talking about getting excited about something, seeing demos on it, and then not being able to get <laughs> access I to any of it. Can't touch it. Yeah. Right. But I guess that's that's the whole thing, is it you know builds that excitement. Get out of the way there. Um, so yeah, so the ability to um, employee self-service by empowering anyone to create a co-pilot. And that is something, again, I'm I'm excited about that capability. I'm still waiting for my OneNote uh, co-pilot tool. Like I, I wanna be able to to point it at my local and my, my two versions of OneNote and be able to, in my voice with all of my history, because everything I've written for the last, at least the last decade, if not longer, is in OneNote. So uh, I have a tab I, I, uh, that I actually, it's called, or a folder called archive. So if I write and publish a blog post, uh, or if I take notes of a product release, if I'm at an event, I do it in that OneNote, I archive that information. And so when I'm gonna write an article, I start by researching in my own content. Mm -hmm. And so that idea of going and training Copilot on my content with my voice, um, to be able to ask it questions about things that I already have in my system, you know, that I've already captured is very exciting. It's very interesting to me. So I thought this was the case. Um, I had one of the pop-ups in OneNote the other day start talking about Copilot in OneNote. Yeah, I've got it, but I oh, haven't good. done anything with it yet. Yeah, yeah if you go under, uh, I think it's the home menu, it'll start to open up. but it. I did see Copilot was integrated, at least in some fashion, into OneNote. So that might be of help to you, Christian. Yeah, I'll go look because I know that um, Jeff Taper was talking about it at the MVP Summit about that mm -hmm. it was in test, and so it's one of those I've just been kind of watching for it, but sure. you know, not not proactively, obviously, if it's out there and I wasn't aware. So well, um, if it without the pop up placards they have for much of the Copilot stuff now, I wouldn't know where it was and wasn't integrated. Yeah. Jeff, are you, is Insight, do you guys have Copilot? Is it being rolled out? Uh, we do have it. Um, I haven't actually used too much of it. I know it's available out of Teams. Um, the one that I have in OneNote is actually, is that linked? That might be either my personal or Insight one. I'm not sure. I'd have to look. No, no, that's yeah. my Insight one. So, yeah, that's um, okay. that's my Insight account. So, yeah, I do have it. I don't do too but, much of that, but. but now I need to go and I need to investigate and try some things and write about it. Um, but yeah, tell me what I should be doing. But the <laughs> idea of going again, the idea of creating a personal uh, co-pilot and going to that, of course, you've been able to go and build 
you know, bots for years, and, uh, and but with Copilot with your enterprise data and specifically um, being able to point it at a SharePoint library and train it on that is pretty awesome. Uh, it's, you know, so it's something where uh, you wanna have something that is, again, security trimmed for this subset of users, but have that in-depth knowledge of that content yeah, you've got search, but this allows you to go and use the native commands yeah. and and query and and build on and refine you know the the results back based on that trained data. I mean, that is pretty slick. Yeah, it is. Any bit of help that uh, you can give users to take them off the menial and repeatable, which repeatable meaning, of course, ample opportunity to mess up. Um, any any insight or uh, intelligence you can put around that is well worth uh, the cost of Copilot. I think. Well, this is it was great. So uh, in Seattle, uh, it was great to see uh, Agnes Molnar. It's uh, if, if yeah. folks that don't know Agnes, she's one of the leading experts out there in the Microsoft ecosystem around the search experience. So I've known her for like 14, 15 years. I mean, as long as you guys, uh, and. Uh, so we often talk about how with all of the new technology, the new answers, like, um, in fact, her session in Seattle, I didn't sit through it, but I passed by when she was uh, waiting for people, the room to fill up. And the title of her session was, will AI or will Copilot replace search? Question mark. And, and I like waved to her in the doorway and I pointed at her, at, at her screen and I just said, <laughs> <laughs> and she, she's like yeah she in fact she joked that she's like i should have my next slide after that should say no and then do the closing any questions thank you for having <laughs> me you know? but what's the but single takeaway from that session <laughs> but here's a great example so now if every sharepoint site that you create and the content that's specific for that project for that team for whatever that is that subset of your overall corporate data has the co-pilot in there, I mean, this changes the search experience dramatically by uh, you know each of those sites. Train on that. You can start asking questions. Do you still need to do create search that's broadly across all of that? Do you still need to do the classification, have your information architecture, content types, all of those things? Yes, of course. Yeah, it doesn't remove that need. No. Well, that's, that's I think, another mistake made, kind of like Delve. Um, was that, well, Delve goes and does this and just finds it. So it should be able to, if I ask a question and pull up, like, no, you still need to do manage all of that. Um, and so it, by managing your being ready for Copilot and getting all the other pieces in place um, around your ser overall search experience will help the Copilot experience. Yeah, it remains gigo, garbage in, garbage out, you know without the yes. benefit of, of a good IA, um, any search experience is really reduced to free text search. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, I was doing this last week in Seattle too, trying to explain um, in my intranet session, it's like, you wanna make sure you get the IA set up properly at the outset, um, or at least as close to what you think the final state would be, just to make sure that, you know, you've got a good search experience because going back to re-architect IA once content's there, that's a that's a tough, tough road to hoe. Yeah, it's just like anything. You got to have a good foundation on it, you know? Damn. Yep. Well, the next one out there, I, I had a, a few conversations uh, with Fabian Williams. It's, it's always great to see two um, former uh, MVPs that are now at Microsoft working on these things. So the team, so the extend and customize Copilot with Copilot extensions. I mean, that's Jeremy Thake leads that team, Fabian, Brian Jacket, um, Sebastian, just a, I think there's a couple more people that are on that team. Um, but, you know, a bunch of former MVPs that know this space well, joined on, um, it, I, I'm, I'm, as it happens, I mean, there's friendships that are created with the product teams and people join and they want to go pull the people that they know the experts from the community in, uh, into these teams. And so Jeremy's done a good job of pulling great people in. 
um, plucking out of the community. But this is another area that, I mean, there's a lot that's going on around the extensibility um, so that uh, you're seeing more and more examples of companies' announcements of partners um, that are building solutions, that are working closely with Jeremy's team and doing custom things, launching new products and services. Like Paul Swider had something that you know, he's doing in the healthcare industry uh, that, that he's gone and built um, one of the first um, co-pilot using the extension capabilities. Um, so there's a lot that's going there. You've got the new agent capabilities uh, as well. Um, so it's, um, you know, so looking at, at more and more advanced um, business processes and automating that. So there's a lot that's happening around, of course, Copilot Studio and Power Platform uh, around a lot of that, the Power Platform extendability, um, new agents, Copilot Studio stuff. So yeah, there's a, a lot of news. Of course, I'll have the, the links to all these articles that I'm showing on screen up there, but um, yeah, so being able to, um, I think before we started recording, one of you made the comment too about um, just from a developer standpoint, the ability to collaborate, to um, co- Yeah, co-authoring on power co ops. Yeah, that, that's huge. I mean, um, uh, just because, you know, people, um, companies would hire us to, you know, come build some apps and stuff like that. And we'd have a team of developers, but only one person can touch the power app at a time. Like that was, yeah. that sucked. Um, so having, being able to have multiple people in there um, is a huge benefit to uh, being able to build out apps quickly. Yep. You also have this new, I mean, I'm very interested in this. This is something that um, I didn't see a session on it. Of course, you look at the book in the news. This is around the new team co-pilot. Um, so this is, you look at it, uh, it. So it has the ability or will have the ability to act as a facilitator for meetings, a both a collaborator inside of the meeting to make sure it's efficient, um, <laughs> tracking activities, and then the project manager um, assigning tasks. So this is going back to like 2015, I think when i believe it was on the microsoft build stage where they had the little fake conference room and they were showing like the future of meetings where they started talking about automating you know ai being able to go in saying like hey sean jeff christian there's this meeting coming up on friday um here's what was discussed last here's what, what your tasks were here's what's happened since then you need to read up on this to be prepared for the meeting you get into the meeting, it's tracking, you know, we're recording it. So we get all of the notes that come out of that. If we're not covering a topic that was on the agenda, you know, it can help build the agenda and say, here's other topics you still need to discuss, decisions that need to be made as part of this. And then once we get out of that meeting, uh, you know, then do the follow-up, like here are the tasks, here's what was assigned to you. Um, so the, the before, during and after assistant around it is going to be um it is much needed for most organizations yeah and so i yeah. got a pm that i was working with recently at um at our company and uh, he was sending out you know meeting notes exclusively that were generated by copilot um and they were fairly on point they were actually straight on point they were it has come a long way well i know that um and just this happened yesterday where uh, it the the notes it provided the first time were very high level, very generic. And so um, you just respond and you say, can you please provide more detailed notes around this? And it, the second time, spot on, it hit all the different pieces, had the level of detail mm -hmm. that was necessary. So that's the thing. It's not like a search result where, and here's what it came back with. You can actually refine that, ask it for, um, to, to have a specific perspective or say specifically items assigned to me and the detail around it, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, again, is a great, it just makes me think of um, the, the eighties movie, real genius <laughs> by like the end of the semester, the kid is uh, the super brainy kid is going to class and he's looking around him and all around him or at every uh, desk are just recording devices. Nobody's actually there in person. And then yeah. finally, the next clip, the teacher is actually has his whole <laughs> lecture pre-recorded, and he's sitting there surrounded by. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not quite that, but 
to the point where if I miss something or a, a better scenario is, you know, those meetings where like uh, the manager's like, I don't want any devices in here. I don't want people sitting there taking notes. I want you to be present. Mm -hmm. You can actually do that and fully participate with confidence that, uh, you know, Copilot is capturing that information mm -hmm. and tracking that. Copilot hears all. It does. It never forgets. <laughs> It is the interwebs. It never forgets. <laughs> yeah. Don't make it angry. I just, <laughs> I, do either of you do that when you're working with uh, Copilot or ChatGPT or any other tool, when you put in commands, do you say please and thank you and stuff to you? And you're like, I, um, I do. <laughs> I respond to my Amazon Alexa that way. You know, I, no, I no, thank well. you. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I you don't well. want to hear I can't repeat what I say to mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I'm saying, folks, is that when our AI overlords take over, I want them to think kindly on me. Right. And look busy. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming. Yeah, they are they're coming. So a lot of this stuff is there's a fairly comprehensive uh art blog post that's out there about what's new in Teams. And it goes through, as you can see over here, all the announcements around Teams and in detail, it's screenshots around all, all this stuff that's going on. So um, this is definitely, if your organization's using Teams, you're exploring, exploring piloting, co-pilot, you wanna know what's coming, this is the blog post for you. Yeah, Lots happening there. Um, let's see what else, uh, there's some, we're still talking about edge. No, don't care about edge. <laughs> Modern work. Extensibility for mesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for mesh. <laughs> um, fluid framework stuff. You know, I like, I, 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 know, I haven't heard anybody mention that in, in a while. I mean, it's just the stuff that's behind working behind the scenes. I mean, it's, yeah. The plumbing. I'm not doing anything with it. Um, new AI powered features and enhanced data protection in, in Teams Premium. And I know this is something Teams Premium, which includes syntax and kind of a bunch of other, uh, you know, uh, admin and governance capabilities within it. Um, this is where you see like the, uh, well, I think the big one from this, let me see where it is. Oh, this is this one. Preventing users from sharing content in externally hosted meetings. Yeah, so now the ability is this is, I think this is being deployed. Oh, it's generally available. Like Again, this was something where I know it was com coming out in waves, so now everybody should have it. The ability, this has been a common complaint when we've done the AMAs. You know, we've seen this question a couple of times, like why are people able to get to the recording or not able to get the recording? Well, now you can control that process. Thank you, Teams notifications that I thought I turned off. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so now you have, you can explicitly go in and say, hey, only the organizers, only the people in my organization, or yes, external people can access um, <clears throat> these meetings and the recordings from them. That's a nice feature. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, who can record and transcribe, kind of all those different things. So they are with the team's premium licenses. Of course, that's, um, I think it, it mostly gets talked about for people that are using it for like the webinar type capability. I don't use Teams for webinars. I, I'm still a, well, I'm more of a StreamYard and Zoom webinar person uh, because it's still more comprehensive and easy to use. Um, but for those organizations that are like, we're gonna use nothing but Microsoft technology because we're already paying for that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I say, good luck to you. <laughs> and I, I've still not been convinced Good to come day, back. Sir. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on there. Uh, and then down in, I see anything else here. Oh, hey, um, Teams in Loop. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, this is PowerPoint Live, this, that, the live stuff, the web, webinar. So Teams in Loop. Custom emojis. Yeah, let's yeah. put that at the top. Got to have our custom emojis. Along with animated GIFs. Yeah. Yes. Slash commands at the compose box. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Um, but then you start to get into, 
you know, unfurling permalinks and loop supported code blocks. So that's awesome. So if you are co-authoring, working on, and you trying to leverage loop, loop is a cool tool. There are big caveats for that. Um, it has its limitations. Um, I, I can't remember if the uh, if the, the external capability if that is out in trial if that's out there. So right now, Loop is it is an internal tool. So if you're doing a lot with with uh, with guests, um, you can do some things. You're more limited there. Um, but if you're try if you want to collaborate and pull people in, and send out the the snippets to people that are outside of your organization entirely that aren't guests in there. It no work. It's for the closed loop for the enterprise, but I believe they're going to approach that by like the similar to a you know a shared team or shared channel where you can go and federate between your environments. So if you have yeah. a partner, if we've hired insult uh, insult insight <laughs> insult insight. <laughs> Oops, Freudian slip there. Yes. If we've hired insight and we're working closely over the next year on this massive project, of course, we're going to go do a federation where it's essentially like they're an extension of the team. Um, and so that that's where that makes sense. Just be careful with Loop. It, sh it, it stores data in six different locations. Uh, it breaks uh, security in, in, in the inheritance. So um, it doesn't a respect uh, sensitivity labels. Dances to um, its own tune. There's a lot of problems from a governance standpoint, folks. So love it, but um, be aware that it's in. If if I'm if I share content or try to share in a loop, if I'm if I'm part of a team, say Sean and I are in the same company, we're part of a team. We have a highly secure team that we're a member of, like the accounting department. And in a loop, we're sharing finances, and then somebody, the Sean, you don't think about it, you add in Jeff, who's an external vendor, who's in there, into the loop, he then has access to that asset that we've shared from that secure area. So, yeah, so there's some issues there. Jeff from Insult. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Had you guys ever heard of Mermaid before? <laughs> Uh, I did I'm a couple it. weeks ago, actually. I heard it for the first time. It's a, a markdown diagramming tool. Okay. Yeah, it's news to me. But then again, most things are news to me. Yeah, same. It's probably been around for decades, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's only the old guys who don't know. I was, the, I was a rational Rose guy, so that's how yeah. old I am. They got sold to IBM... For folks mm -hmm. that are younger, don't know what it is. It was a really slick product, but it was that data diagramming visualization tool. You could actually build a UML model, and it would, based on your model, it could generate Write some code. Yeah. code. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty slick. But they sold to IBM in 2001, and um, honestly, I don't even. I'm sure it exists out there, but unless you're an IBM customer, you've probably never heard of it. Or you're old like me. <laughs> um, so yeah, a Jack, car based loop components. Tablets. Yeah, I came in just after that. I was a Windows three dot one person. Stone tablets was Windows two dot oh, I think. Uh, ah, okay, all right. Yeah, I was getting confused. Uh, I did let's see, install so one, Windows one, and rapidly uninstalled it because I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I'm going back to my you DOS do, prompt. You do, uh, you guys do uh, Power Platform stuff, I, correct? Some? Yes. Yes. So, I'm like, I don't know if you have anything to say around some of the announcements, the new Security Hub feature. I mean, I mean essentially, like, as you were talking about, they're, they're doing more to expand for Power Platform. Mm -hmm. You know, the co-authoring, um, the ability to, to, to collaborate on that stuff, to, you know, integration with, with GitHub around that. Um, to make it easier to, for if an individual goes and builds a solution for them or for their immediate team, and then somebody sees it and wants to expand that and said, hey, everybody in the company should have this. Um, it's easier to see those, to work on those things, and then to expand that out to the organization. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I know Purview has been undergoing some changes and they're going to be uh, moving to the newer interface. It's in preview right now. Uh, you can turn it on or off. But if you don't have Purview in your license, you probably have the Compliance Center. So I suspect everything's going to be Purview before too long and all of this stuff will be integrated there. Yeah, and of course they're setting up you know, all of this so that, you know, make sure that it has the co-pilot angle to that yeah um but yeah it, it's um yeah there's there's a lot going again because we'll have the articles here um as as well but the um i mean as far as uh yeah so being able to build the power apps at scale to scale those up is really important i mean that was a question i heard at the n365 conference um somebody was asking about um being able to see for Power Apps and Power BI, being able to easily see um, solutions that were built off of SharePoint in the back end versus Dataverse, mm. like wh where they are, which data it was pointing to. I'm like, yeah, that is, w that's an important part of the overall governance for that that governance body, be able to go and look at how is this architected? Mm -hmm. And then, hey, is this something that we agree this, we want to move this up, make it more generally available, what's needed? to scale that that product. So make it easy to work together to see that data. Right, are you gonna need to buy a thousand premium licenses or not? <laughs> yeah. That's like the, you know, from a overall a governance standpoint, and that's I, like, I, and I don't care about Windows stuff. Sorry, Windows people, I went. <laughs> we just I, use I don't it. Care about that, but yeah, we just <laughs> use it. We just live in there, but um, yeah. Well, I guess I can, so I'll provide all these links, of course, if you've not seen those, but. Yeah, having more granular view into, um, you know, what is being used and by whom from a licensing standpoint, that licensing optimization, it's like the number one thing that people ask about from a governance standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like I, I need to have visibility into this. So I know that the various providers that are out there, I work with Rencore, friends with the orchestry team, you know, Avpoint team, um, syskit teams, like like all the leading solutions have some variation on that. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm very familiar with how Rencore does it, but again, it's the number one thing that people come and ask about. Like, can you help me so that I'm not spending as much on licenses? And, and so a I mean, common scenario is, is, especially Microsoft pushing everybody to upgrade to E5, uh, and so it's really easy to go in and see, hey, you've got these 20 users that have E3 and E5 and Teams Premium and Premium connectors. They've never used the, previous, the, the uh, uh, Power Platform connectors. You're paying for these. Do you need to have, be paying for E3 and E5? I'm like, in all likelihood, no. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's some reason why that's the case, but likely not. Um, and then are they using the other advanced features that they require in E5 <clears throat> if they also have Teams Premium? So having overlapping licenses is a pretty common scenario. Yeah, um, well, I mean, the last time I was out looking at the available license types, there were like several hundred different licenses you could buy. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's absolutely stupefying. I mean, I couldn't sit down and figure out which license I would need to get a particular feature. So. Any sort of, I mean, you're you're talking about the over licensing scenario. I'm I'm on the other side of, you know, I need to do X. What the hell do I need to buy? Right. right. We need more of that guidance. Well, that does require the PhD in licensing. It it that's always yeah. been true for the Microsoft ecosystem. Yeah. Well, but, I, it's like yeah. I told, like the, the folks I was doing the intro to admin uh, M365 admin class last week. I said, you get three license, Microsoft licensing people in a room and you'll get at least four different licensing arrangements and scenarios. Yeah. It makes for a very lively discussion with them. Yeah. Let alone if you have your own EA agreement and you have a different licensing structure on top of that. Oh, don't. <laughs> You're going to rupture my brain, man. Sorry. <laughs> That's going to be a fairly common call uh, into Microsoft support uh, around licensing is that, look, my company had this. We went and built this. We're already covered here. Can you? But I've done all these things around that profile. I'm getting the reminders. Um, I mean, I've done that in the past. And I just like, just, just 
pay for it again for the renewal for the next next year we don't have the time to go sit on a you know a four to six hour call to try and get it resolved with with microsoft support um but yeah so uh, uh you know optimizing licenses again is number one scenario mm -hmm. um and and then just being aware of uh, you know on an ongoing basis who has what i mean the second to that is tracking external guests especially if you're paying for licenses for those guests and mm -hmm. now here's a scenario i'm sure it's never <clears throat> happened an admin gives a person additional licenses to go do a thing temporarily and then forgets to pull back once they're done those other licenses so yeah, that's, I'm sure it never happens to anyone else. Yes. It's happened to no. me though, but yeah. Uh, uh, you're, that, you're that guy. Be, being aware <laughs> of, you know, who are my external guests and what are they doing to the system? So it, it, it's a, you know, again, if you know, number one way you save money, like you're probably paying too much for the licenses that you have. If you're in a, an organization with 50 or more people, it's, you have that scenario somewhere. And so you just even have to, with like even with like you know less than that you know they're probably paying for more than they need to yeah yeah i wish it would that would be a great thing for microsoft to not to take away from partner solutions but microsoft would build in is that as licensing optimization like based on usage patterns you're never using these capabilities it probably makes more sense for you to be on this license versus the one you're on mm -hmm. I would say the bulk of the PowerShell scripts I've written in admin capacity have gone in, analyzed licensing, and either added licenses or counted licenses um, and yep. output those. So I know we've got I mean, most I, of that tooling now. But I um, got a, a call from Verizon, my phone provider, telling me okay. that you're paying too much. Like you, based on your usage, you would fit better within this plan. Of course, the, what they didn't tell they you was that they're renewing, you know, as, as part of that, that move, um, which I didn't do fall in that trap. All I did was go into my existing contract and then change myself there without renewing the, mm -hmm. restarting the, the contract. But, oh, um, but I'm just saying the fact that, I mean, even, even they get it. Even the and phone company, the, the cable company. The evil phone companies. Yeah. <laughs> cable companies will never do that. Yeah, no. But. Well, gentlemen, uh, I appreciate your input this this time. We need to, uh, you know, probably uh, see what's coming up. We got summer, so there might not be any major announcements here till uh, later this fall. But I'm sure we'll do another recording prior to Ignite happening, and then we'll have to do a post Ignite and whatever announcements come from that. Makes Sounds sense. Like a plan to me. My birthday's so. next week. Oh, oh happy, happy early birthday, birthday, Sean! Thank you. Which day is it on? Tuesday. Okay, so this recording will go be published afterwards. So everyone, please reach out and wish Sean a belated happy birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah. I bet Good the day. only people I hear from are the people that you prompt to come out. <laughs> well, Facebook reminds me of everyone's birthday, so. Yeah, yeah well, I've, I, go I, I've gone in and removed my birthday and then added back shortly after. Um, just to, you know, I, I get hundreds of, you know, hey, happy birthday. And yeah. for one, at one point in time, I felt compelled to respond to every single one of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that is a full-time job. So, yeah, I have that feature turned off for my profile. So mm -hmm. no, that's why I never good. know when your birthday is. That's right. <laughs> it's in October, Jeff. I'm surprised you don't know. We've known each other long enough. You should I, know that. Mine's also in October, but, you know. Well, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> and, it, and it's not that I wouldn't say something. It's because ultimately I just don't care. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too, no. man. <laughs> I will. We'll, we'll have to. I'm going to put like a note in there the the, the month of uh, of October um, to uh, to make sure to reach out to you. I'm going to put a calendar reminder in. It, it will happen. I also have my fourth grandchild coming in October. So I'm excited. Oh, congratulations. Ooh, congratulations. Month, or she could arrive on my birthday who knows that'd be awesome <laughs> yeah it would be awesome cool man oh, congratulations yeah well thank you well I, it's not like i did anything my, my work was done 32 years ago so i know but you still did something 32 years ago yeah uh, 
thank you. Yeah, for recognizing. <laughs> I remind my wife all the time, but she doesn't care. So. <laughs> well, gentlemen, have have a great weekend, and everybody, thanks for watching. Yep. All right. Well. Cheers. We'll talk again soon. You've been listening to the Collab Talk podcast. New episodes are published weekly, and you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and most other podcast platforms. Thanks for listening.